What's going on and welcome to an overview of the Lenovo P920 Data Science Workstation. What you see in front of you is the flagship version which comes with all sorts of goodies. So inside of here, well, what do we get inside of here? So as soon as this thing arrived at my door and I got it out of the box, the very first thing I had no choice but to do was of course open it up. So let's check out the internal components here. So to open it, it's actually super simple. You just press in here and then it slides over and boom, you're inside. It's that quick. <laughs> it's easier than my main computer. I wish I had a case like that. So inside, we're immediately greeted by two of the most beautiful things that you've ever seen, and that is two RTX 8000 GPUs. That's 48 gigabytes of VRAM per GPU. They're connected via an NV link there, and that gives you a combined total of 96 gigabytes of VRAM, which is amazing. So for the rest of our internal goodies, it looks like quite a few of them are hiding underneath this cover here. Uh, I saw the big red here. It looks like a handle. I assumed I could pull it, and sure enough, I got away with it. And underneath there, there are the two Intel Xeon Gold 8-core CPUs, as well as all of our RAM, which currently amounts to 192 gigabytes of RAM, which is also amazing. So now to geek out even more, this cover is actually more than just a cover, it's a molded piece which is serving to actually channel the airflow uh, coming off of the fans, coming off of the heat sinks for the CPUs. And it, it's actually kind of interesting, I've never seen anybody use a cover over them to actually channel the air. And so I was, I was curious, does that actually work? Because if you've ever played with airflow and temperatures in computer cases, then you know uh, it's actually a really tricky thing to get right, and it's really easy to do something you think is obvious, uh, and you're just totally wrong. <laughs> so I was curious, one, does it actually help these two CPUs in any way? And then two, is it negatively impacting this GPU here? Because the clearance, it's like, it's really close. It's less than a centimeter of clearance between this GPU and the wall of that cover. And that cover is moving hot air, so the cover itself is actually probably pretty hot too. So, uh, so I ran some tests, <laughs> and uh, with the cover on, this CPU is actually five degrees Celsius cooler uh, than with it off. This CPU has no change, this GPU has no change, and then this GPU has no change either, but this is our hot GPU. Uh, and then this would traditionally be our hot CPU because the hot air from this CPU is blowing onto the heat sink here, and then it's blowing here and blowing out. So actually this heat sink is taking on more heat than this heat sink. So this is typically going to be your hotter CPU, but it turns out this is your hot CPU now. So uh, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's pretty impressive. So basically this molded piece saves this five degrees Celsius under load. So that pretty much covers all of the exciting hardware bits to the machine, but pretty much everything else is like really quick and easy to like pop in and out, like all these fans that just slide in and out. Uh, also, you've got the power supply, which is a pretty honking PSU. This is uh, 1,400 watts, which is uh, plenty of power uh, for what we're running here. So also pretty dang impressive. So in terms of dimensions and footprint, uh, I wouldn't use these measurements uh, for actually like making hard space, but just in general, the machine is about 24 and a half inches long, which translates to 62-ish centimeters uh, tall. It's about 17 and a half, which translates to 44 and a half centimeters. And width is about seven and three quarters inches, which translates to 20 centimeters. So I mean, relatively, uh, it's a large machine, you know, compared to your average computer. But uh, all things considered, what's in here, it's actually a pretty condensed case, and things aren't like squished next to each other. Uh, I'd say this case is about the same volume-wise, if not smaller, than my main computer, and has way more of a punch. <laughs> so uh, pretty cool there. Also, the machine itself is super heavy. I haven't actually weighed it, but it's very heavy. <laughs> and it comes with like these carrying handles up at the top and at the bottom. I would never trust those carrying handles though. <laughs> so uh, I don't know who has the um, bravery to trust those, but uh, it wasn't me. 
yeah, 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 we get it. It's amazing. How much does it cost? So the machine, as you see it, fully configured is $30,000. And I know there will be people in the comments who are like, I could build that for way cheaper. Uh, to that, I would say, hey, maybe you should start a high-end uh, workstation company. Uh, I, too, could go to PC Part Picker and put together something with similar specs for less money, uh, at least to the point that everything will connect and it will boot up. <laughs> And that's where it stops. So I've been building computers now for over a decade. And one thing that I've learned is, one, I don't know that much about building computers, even though I've been doing it quite for a long time. Every time I build, I learn something new. And I'm like, oh, man, I didn't even think about that. Um, but finding things that just simply connect and you turn on is a lot different than finding parts that are all very compatible with each other as well as reliable. And even like little things like airflow, like we were talking about, um, that takes a long time to kind of figure out how to get right. And if you're going to be building or getting, spending this much money on hardware, you definitely want to get it right. And you want things to be as optimal as possible. So, uh, I, I think it would be fun to build it. And if you're someone who knows how to build machines, then this might not actually be for you. Uh, but even then I, you might seriously consider it because you might also just waste a bunch of your money and, and not get as much for your money as you thought you might be getting. So anyway, um, yeah, so so with that, what else do you get? So when you buy this from Lenovo, the other thing that it comes with is a three-year warranty. And if a three-year warranty is not good enough for computer equipment that is going to be running very hot and up to 24-7 for three years, <laughs> if you ask me, that's a crazy warranty to give because... <laughs> I, I've never built a, a machine that I ran for like data science purposes uh, that runs even remotely close to or at 24-7 times uh, that has not failed, at least a part broken, within, I would have to say, at least the first year, but definitely within three years. And again, I'm sure there will be people who are like, oh, I've built my computer and it never had a, pro a problem for 10 years. Well... There's a big difference between playing a video game once a day for a few hours and running something 24-7. That's really hard on the parts. Heat is the biggest thing. It just kills. Uh, so, so anyway, a three-year warranty alone is pretty awesome, but that's not any three-year warranty. It's a three-year next business day on-site warranty. They will send someone out to you <laughs> to repair your machine. Uh, so that's also pretty epic. So anyway, uh, overall, I'm, I'm actually really impressed with this. I'm always nervous about people sending me or offering to send me uh, equipment because especially something like this, like I said, I'm someone who builds my own machines. So if you're charging me a markup over hardware, I need to know why. And uh, at least to me, it seems like, you know, for especially for like enterprise customers or even like research, if you're paying out to AWS or something, it just doesn't take long to hit this price tag. And regardless of whether or not this machine was even $40,000, it's still going to make sense to actually own the hardware. Because like on AWS, uh, if you're running 24-7, after a month of 96 gigs of VRAM, you're looking at uh, like $13,000. That's on AWS. That will be the same on Azure because they basically price match. And then like on Google, I want to say you'd be looking at like $11,000 or something like that, which is just nuts. Uh, so, so it would not take very long to equal the purchase price of this thing. And then you have it. And then after that, you've, you've, you've made a solid investment. So if you are someone who's training big models for long term, then this is definitely a machine for you. So at least for me, as soon as I got this thing and kind of poked around, um, that same day within hours of receiving the machine, I turned it on and I have been running this machine nonstop since I got it over a month ago. And uh, it's just been nothing but a workhorse. So some of the things that I've done with it, one is I trained the self-driving car in the Carla environment using reinforcement learning and doing that on this machine, for example, compared to like my main machine, I'm running a Titan RTX in my main computer, which actually has 24 gigs of VRAM. Uh, but on that main machine, I was only able to run basically one agent in one environment on my main computer. Whereas on here, I was actually able to run four environments and eight agents. And we actually could have run eight environments and eight agents, but we were getting better FPS frames per second on, uh, with, with the four environments. So we ended up just going that route. But, 
Um, that's pretty substantial. That's eight agents. So basically we're training eight times faster. So you might even be thinking, well, I don't need 96 gigs of VRAM. I'll just use uh, 16 or something like that. And again, if you're using just that basic V100 with 16 gigs of VRAM on AWS, this machine, you're, you're still going to spend the same amount of money, right? Like either you're running uh, 96 gigs of VRAM per hour, or you're running 16. And if you're running 16, it's going to take you six times longer. So it's still going to, even if all you're doing is scaling out and, and improving that way, you're going to probably do better. Uh, the next thing is just simply being able to run even like bigger models. So another thing that I was able to do on this machine, and that's what I'm training right now, is a, uh, a, a deep learning chat bot, which uh, among, uh, besides just having a, just a ton of data right now, even after like pre-processing and throwing out just a ton of data, we've got uh, 300 million comment and reply pairs. So it's a lot of data to get through. So it's nice to have the most recent. I mean, the RTX 8000 is the best GPU you can get your hands on right now. Um, only really made better if you could maybe access like a TPU or something like that. But those are unbelievably expensive. So I'm not even going to really reference TPUs. Uh, but anyway, basically, this is the best GPU you can get your hands on. And uh, so one, it's just quick. It's quicker. So even the RTX cards, they're actually faster than the V100 cards. And uh, so with the chatbot, one, it's it's training faster. It takes a long time to get through all those samples. But then two, I'm able to train a huge model compared to the previous models I've ever been able to train. I've only able, or at least historically, the biggest one I've done is uh, 11 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas here we're on 96. So the model is way, way larger. So it's enabled us to actually play, not only to, to train things faster, like sometimes up to like eight times faster, I'm also able to play with much, much bigger models. So it's really cool. I've really grown to enjoy the machine. Unfortunately, I have to send it back. So, <laughs> so uh, I don't know why they won't let me keep it forever, but such is life. So anyway, uh, that about concludes uh, the overview of this, this machine. A little bit ago, I did a video on, you know, cloud versus local computing. And this is basically like the pinnacle of local hardware. Um, so uh, if you're running a, like long-term training models and you're paying out to a cloud provider over the course of many months because you're running 24-7, you should really consider something local. And at least for me, um, I'm really impressed with this machine. It's it's clear that Lenovo put thought into this machine and its reliability. And the last thing I'll say too is that uh, whenever I was asking about their warranty, I was like giving them examples of like, what would you do if someone can't do this and this? And basically what, what the guy told me is that Lenovo over the course of two years has a 5% repair rate, uh, which means, so this is somebody actually like called in and needed something to get repaired. So 5% over the course of two years, that's insane. I mean, it's just insane. Um, I've never been able to build something that hasn't actually had a failure within that time frame. So 5% is incredibly low. Uh, so as long as you're having a three-year on-site next business day warranty, it's in your best interest to make stuff that doesn't fail. So uh, that's also really cool. Um, you can definitely have faith in the machine. Also, Lenovo as a company is highly unlikely to not be here in three years. So you can actually have faith in the actual warranty still actually being useful in three years. So anyway, really cool. I'm actually super impressed with the product. I think it's actually a good, it's a fair price. I know 30,000 sounds like a lot, but what you're getting in return, uh, I think is worth it. And even with my knowledge, if I was uh, in the market for spending $30,000 on local hardware, I'd still seriously consider this, um, certainly over cloud computing but also just in general versus, let's say, building it myself, just because I, I'd, I'd rather have some tried and tested method for making use of my, 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 my hugely expensive two CPUs and GPUs. I mean, just the CPUs and GPUs, this is 5,500, 5,500. I want to say that the, each CPU, I might be getting this wrong. I, I want to say like $2,000 or something for a CPU. It's a lot of money. So if you're going to buy such high-end hardware, it would be nice if, if you could find a configuration that's already tested and stuff. So anyway, that's it for now. Uh, till next time.